Hello and welcome to another edition of Conspirator Brock's Pull List. This is my pull list for the week of May 15th, 2019. Let's get right into it. First up, we have American Gods, um, The Coming of the Storm. Uh, number two, uh, if you like American Gods, the TV show, and you haven't read the book, you should check out the book. But uh, if you don't want to check out the book, there is the graphic novel or comic you can read. I'm enjoying it so far. It makes me want to reread my... Um, copy of American Gods. I read it so long ago, I need to, to brush up on uh, what it's about, but reading the comic helps uh, with that a little. Uh, next up is Aquaman, number 48. Uh, Kelly Sue DeConnick has not uh, been kind on this book. I'm not really sure why I'm still getting it. Um, I'm going to go to issue 50, and we'll see from there, but for the most part, I don't think it's going to be something that I'm going to keep on my pull list. Uh, next up is Batman 71, a Tom King, a Batman, tons of stuff is awesome in this and you should be reading it, period. Uh, Batman has been great uh, since Rebirth, Tom King's done a fantastic job on the book. I cannot wait to see what he has in store for The Dark Knight, um, going into his, the tail, like the last quarter of his run, um, but I'm super, super stoked to read it and cannot wait to see what happens um, in this issue and going forward. Next up, we have Gideon Falls, number 13. Uh, Jeff Lemire and uh, Andrea Sorrentino. Just fantastic work on this book. Uh, really, really love it. It's great, great stuff. Um, they're supposed to be making a TV show of it. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to go anywhere. But uh, if you get a chance, pick up Gideon Falls, volume 1, uh, and check it out for yourself and see if you like it. Next up, we have High Level, number 4. Um, I've enjoyed the first few issues of this. It's interesting. I'm curious to see where it goes. Um, it's a six issue mini, so I'm, I'm happy with it so far. It's not something I'm like, oh my God, why did I buy this and why am I reading it? Uh, so yeah, so definitely something to check out. Uh, if you can track down a copy of issue one, if not, the trade should be out in half a year. We'll see. Next up, something for my kids, and that's Incredibles 2, Secret Identities. Um, once they start getting um, more animate about reading, um, I'm gonna, they're just going to have a plethora of comics to read. Uh, and that's mainly why I've been buying them um, for a while now, uh, just so they have them there, and so they have a nice they, they can feel that they're oh they're their own. Um, plus, they get to you know learn how to take care of them because I'm going to make them take care of them. You're going to keep them in the bags and boards. You're going to tape them nicely. I mean, I'll be nice about it, but yeah. Uh, next up, we have Justice League number 24. Scott Snyder's done a fantastic job with this book, um, co-writing uh, occasionally with uh, Tyrion the uh, Tyrion the Fourth. Um, and, uh, yeah, cannot wait to see what happens in that issue. Uh, a lot of stuff going to come out of Justice League, um, and in if in a, we're going to get hit with the uh, Year of the Villain here pretty soon, so I'm really excited and curious to see what that entails. Next up, we have The Life uh, and Death of Toyo, Toyo Hydra. Um, this is issue three. Um, it's interesting. It's cool. It's kind of a big, uh, like an in-depth backstory on the character, um, is he a villain? Is he not a villain? Um, really, really complex, interesting stuff. Um, I enjoy it. So next up we have live wire number six. Um, I thought this was going to be a mini, apparently not I'm curious to see how long it keeps going. Um, but we'll see. Next up is oblivion song number 15. Um, I thought this cover was pretty cool with the, the face and then the thing in the background, like you're not really sure what to focus on. Uh, but Oblivion Song has been great. Robert Kirkman's done a fantastic job on that book, and I cannot wait uh, to read it every month um, just to see what it's about. Um, but yeah, if you get a chance, pick up that first um, trade. Um, if you don't want to, don't want to like hunt down a trade. Um, yeah, I mean, what can I say? That's the best way to do it. Just pick up the first trade, read it. If you like it, your commitment was very, very little. So, um, and if you didn't like it, but you know somebody that might, you can pass it on and gift it. Or if you're shop, lucky enough to have a shop near you that takes back used trades, trade back in for a little credit to get something else. Next up we have uh, Superman at number 11. Uh, looks like, uh, I can't even pronounce his name, uh, Zozi Grograu, whatever that guy's name is. Um, yeah, he's back and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, Superman's been on kind of a, what's been going on with John hiatus, uh, so we shall see what it entails uh, going forward with Superman. Uh, Bendis has done a good job in giving us two distinct different types of books with action and Superman, um, but I think currently action is a lot better you know, of a book, um, but I still enjoy reading Superman. 
Um, if you're not reading Superman now or Action, I would highly recommend uh, going back and reading at least um, Action 1000 and the Man of Steel miniseries to see if you kind of want to jump into Bendis' run. Uh, it's good stuff, so I would highly recommend you check it out. Next up is one for my daughter, and that's Tangled, the series Here and Now, uh, issue two. So, yep, it's going to go in her box, and at some point she's going to read it, hopefully. Uh, next up, we have a Teen Titans number 30, The Terminus Agenda. Is it Agenda? Yeah, Agenda. This is the epilogue. Uh, I have not been impressed with The Terminus Agenda. It crossed over with Deathstroke, maybe by a couple of issues of Deathstroke, and it really wasn't a story that went anywhere and was completely just eh. Um, it, 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 it is what it is. Um, the Deathstroke issues will go in with my Titans issues, and that's pretty much it. So, yeah. Uh, next up is one for me and the kids, and that's Teen Titans Go! number 34. This collects digital issues, I believe, 67 and 68. Um, so, yeah, I keep getting Teen Titans Go! Uh, 34 issues in, and I'm still picking it up. It's just, it's cheesy Teen Titans Go! It's not as good ri uh, writing as the, uh, as the TV show, but it is still funny at times and still follows in the same vein. So if you like Teen Titans Go! the show, you may like picking up the comic. And if you have kids, they'll definitely like the comic, so... I did grab a few variants this week. Um, the first one was for Aquaman 48. Uh, I really liked this variant. I thought it was really cool, so I decided to snag that one up. Uh, Batman 71 had a pretty interesting variant, so I grabbed that one up as well. Uh, Justice League's 24 has a really cool um, Trinity one cover going on there, so I, I snagged that one up. And Titans 30 had a uh, one for Red Arrow, uh, and so I picked that one up as well. Um, I did pick up a graphic novel this week that came out, um, and that's Superman, the Deluxe Edition, Rebirth, the Deluxe Edition, but four, this finishes collecting everything that Tomasi wrote, um, at for Rebirth, um, really, really solid run from Tomasi, he just nails it with the father, son, and family dynamic in this book, uh, this is probably the best Superman had been in a long, long time, uh, and yeah, it's just really, really solid stuff. If you get a chance, go back and read those Superman issues, um, Rebirth, all the way through to this, and really, really solid stuff. I highly, highly recommend it. Um, it they'll most likely release an omnibus of this, um, but I have four hardcovers that are good size that I like, so I'm not, I don't necessarily need to have the, the omnibus of it. But uh, that might be something down the road you want to check out and see if they're going to bring out. But otherwise, soft covers are out for that as well as the uh, these four hard covers. So definitely something I would recommend you checking out. Um, I did get a special order this or two special orders this week. Um, first, I will do the one that's not for me. Um, I did get a, another uh, Disney Traditions um, for my daughter, and I got the Adventurous Artist. Rapunzel, so I picked that up for Hattie. Um, hopefully she likes it. Um, apparently, I completely forgot that I picked her up another uh, Rapunzel little fig Disney traditions figure, and I forgot to give it to her for her birthday. Mm, bad dad. Um, so <laughs> we'll see what I do uh, with these two figurines. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm uh, yeah. It, I just it completely like just went out of my mind it was it, it happens sometimes um but i did get something for myself um this week and that is the joelle jones um wonder woman uh dc collectible statue came in uh just really really or dc cover girls i should say uh joelle jones wonder woman statue that's the that's it right there there's the sketch it's based on these are a couple of the other ones by her mara which i have which is amazing uh, I don't know if I picked up the Black Canary or ordered that, but uh, this is the Wonder Woman. Um, uh, hopefully, I'll be able to get to an unboxing video for you guys on this one. Um, but uh, the Joel Jones uh, Cover Girl statues are really awesome. Uh, we had we got one for the shop and have already opened it, um, and this one looks. She's beefy, like she actually is very muscular and and a little bit taller than the other character in this DC Cover Girl line for Joel Jones, and it really just pops. Um, really good design. Uh, even though she has those, is a little bit more muscular, it, it works amazingly well, uh, making her very Amazon looking. Um, and I mean, up close it looks a little weird, but when you actually look at it at a distance, um, it's really, really solid stuff. Like Big Barda right here um, above me, uh, she's a little bit bigger than the other ones. Um, 
and it just you can from a distance it looks amazing with the subtleties that they can they can get with these statues so uh yeah be on the lookout for that uh and something else two other things actually came out this week um that i did not purchase uh one i am tempted to, well both i am tempted to purchase but both um i'm tempted not to purchase um uh, for the reason that um they're not what i want um and uh this has been a huge kind of issue with um dc especially and uh again with dc's trade department or graphic novel department um and those two things are the first one is uh the batman white knight uh, by sean murphy uh was released in a hardcover today as well as um this one which is mr miracle um so this is a hardcover for mr miracle uh, this is exclusive only to comic book stores. You can only get this version at comic book stores. You won't be able to get this at Barnes & Noble or on... I don't think you should, will be able to get it on Amazon. I think this is only exclusive to comic book stores. So if you like this version, then yes, go ahead and pick it up. And it's really nice and I'm tempted. I am super, super tempted. Um, but it does not fit the size I want. The size I want is a deluxe hardcover. So I want the tall one. I want the extra stuff. I want this to be nice and, and there on my shelf. Um, and they didn't do that. Um, and it sucks because uh, Mr. Miracle uh, was a, is a really, really good title. Um, one of the reasons I did, um, I, I mean, I picked up the Vision Trades uh, because I didn't know if they were going to do a deluxe hardcover of Vision over at Marvel, but they did. Um, but part of me is glad I picked up the trade, so I had copies to read if I didn't, if they didn't do it. Uh, but Mr. Miracle is one of those ones that everybody knew they were going to do a hardcover. People were asking for the deluxe hardcover, and yet DC didn't deliver and give us a deluxe hardcover. Like they, that's what they should have done out of the out of the gate, given us a deluxe hardcover, just put it out there, and then done a soft cover after that one had come out. Um, a lot of retailers are, you know, well, at least some most, most retailers that that know their clientele, know that their customers wanted a deluxe hardcover. These will sell. Don't get me wrong. They will sell. It's a hardcover. It's Mr. Miracle. I may buy one just because I I even bought the Mr. Miracle trade, which I said I wasn't going to, but I bought the Barnes & Noble variant because I actually liked the cover on that one. So, yeah. DC's trade department is uh, <laughs> not making people happy. And this goes for Batman White Knight as well. Um... They did, they're just releasing a, uh, this hardcover only, so apparently only to comic book stores. And it's going to have black, it has the black label little thing on the corner of it. it. I don't know why they're not doing these deluxe hardcovers. I can understand doing regular size hardcovers for things that are original graphic novels, like the Earth One stuff that um, DC's done with Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and Green Lantern and Teen Titans. Like I understand that size for a hardcover. I also understand like a like a smaller hard uh, hardcover size for like Batman and the Outsiders, something that's not necessarily going to be um, like mass mass bought by people but people buying it want a nice version of it in hardcover um something like mr miracle which had gr uh, excellent popularity people wanted to read it um they just dropped the ball in not getting us the uh deluxe edition and it's really really sad not to mention um that uh i'll i'll try and link it in the description below um but um We've basically, DC has been talking to retailers and saying, oh, we're going to change the tra trade dress and all this stuff, and it's going to have this, and it's going to have this. And there's like 50 bajillion things that they wanted to do because they like what the look of the epic collections, but no, you know, no numbering on the spine and all of this stuff. Because like, people see one to like 30 volumes and they, they, they give up. They don't want to deal, even start a 30 volume thing. I'm like, yeah, it's 30 volume thing is a daunting task. But if you had 30 volumes of something, it's probably good. Like it, for if it's still going for thirty volumes, you've done something right. Um, but uh, DC doesn't seem to understand trade dress and how it looks on the shelf and how people in, like want their stuff to look uniform and nice. Because I mean, that's part of of having a collection, especially with graphic novels, is displaying them and saying, "Hey, these is this is what I really enjoy." And when you look at the spines and they're all messed up or they're all different sizes or they just don't work right, it just it's it turns people off from getting the product. So 
I don't know. That's my rant about the Mr. Miracle uh, hardcover. Do you guys think I should buy it? Let me know in the comments below. Um, if you guys say yes, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I, I know you're trying to be vindictive and, and get back at me for some reason. I'm, I'm sorry if I hurt you. <laughs> I probably hurt your wallet. That's probably what I hurt. Uh, so that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you want, you can also listen to me on the Comics Conspiracy podcast. We just finished recording episode 401, where we talk about, um, a couple, we take some listener questions. We talk about two months worth of sales charts um, because March's sales charts came out so late in the month of March. And with everything going on with movies and, and stuff with the podcast, we couldn't actually get a chance. Oh, I'm sorry. The. March numbers came out so late in April that we weren't able to get the like the episode done because we had our end game episode and all this stuff and it took so long to get the March numbers because Marvel was throwing a temper, temper tantrum uh and then uh the main numbers came out virtually instantaneously because Marvel dominated both in unit share and dollar and they're like oh look they look great like release those so uh, listen to the episode if you want a little more insider uh, info on uh, sales charts and how Marvel throws temper tantrums. We also talk about Marvel's 1000 um, uh, book that's coming out in August that they've spent the last week teasing with the you know single page thing with creative team's name on it. And then it just says on the bottom, August 2019, um, Marvel Comics 1000, 1000 Y. The, You'll find out what we think of that 1,000 number if you listen to the episode. So yeah, check it out. Link in the description below for that. You can help me and my fellow conspirators out through Patreon at www.patreon.com slash comics conspiracy. For as little as a dollar a month, you help us with hosting fees, getting food sometimes, and getting products. So thank you very much to all of our backers. It is much appreciated. We do, do enjoy. Or we, so we do appreciate it. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, you can help me out more directly if you want by going to any of the Amazon links I have on my YouTube channel here or over on conspiratorbrock.com where I post my actual list of each uh, th of the things I get every week. Uh, the links to those uh, are for Comixology to help out the store. So if you buy it through that, you help out Comics Conspiracy. But if you buy anything through Amazon links, that gets me a cut. And so I appreciate those people that do that and take a little extra time to, you know, help me out. Uh, and again, you can also go over to my eBay page, uh, where I'm purging stuff out. Um, there'll be a link in the description below. So check that out. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting some new stuff up this weekend. Um, I need to purge out some more stuff, um, before we get to moving because, uh, moving is coming up soon. So yeah, a lot of stuff to move. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.